All righty, here we go. What hormones impact sleep? What, what's important for sleep? And if you're thinking, yeah, there's just one, it's melatonin. There's more than that. <laughs> there's more than that, we're gonna talk about it. I'm Dr. Beth Westy, women's health and hormone expert. Um, and uh, I love to cover all things health and hormones for the female body, talking about important things that impact your overall health as well as balancing and keeping and maintaining your hormones. So sleep is a huge one. This is one of those things that if you're not getting good sleep, you cannot outrun this. You cannot outwork this. You cannot eat cleaner if you are not getting good sleep. If you are not getting quality, restorative, restful sleep, right? Restful sleep. There is no replacement for that. If you are stressed, if you want better recovery, if you want to increase your metabolism, if you want to decrease inflammation, if you whatever it is you want to accomplish more with your health, it in, it includes sleep and having better sleep. And the hard thing is, is just just like I say, you can't force function. You can't like push harder for sleep because it's sleep. <laughs> you have to let it happen, and you have to set your body up for success to have high quality sleep. This is one of my favorite things that when I work with women. Um, and they do the female hormone solution program. They're like, I am sleeping. Like I am sleeping. It is, it is life changing for women who cannot sleep and they finally start sleeping. So if you are not on the wait list for the next program, make sure you go in the comments, get on that wait list um, because we can only take so many people. So yes. All right. So hormones and sleep. I'm going to put the first one down, right? I'm just going to, we all know what it is, right? Melatonin. Now, melatonin, a few things about melatonin here that are important to realize is that melatonin is made by the pineal gland. And if you're like, who cares about that? <laughs> Your brain does. Your brain cares about this, okay? Your pineal gland is activated by light and dark patterns. So this is the sleep and wake cycles that your brain has. Yes. Yes. So this means that if you do not get good natural sunlight, if you are not outside, if you stare at a screen too long, all of these things can actually decrease your body's natural production of melatonin. Melatonin is supposed to be most active at night. You know, it increases at night as you're going to sleep. That's what helps you feel sleepy and then it helps you stay asleep at night. And then in the morning when you wake up, ding, a different hormone is supposed to help wake you up. You and I know it, our good friend, our good friend, cortisol. Our good friend, cortisol. Now, <laughs> I say our good friend. Sometimes it doesn't feel like we're friends. Because you might be thinking, cortisol, that's a stress hormone, right? Yes, correct. And isn't this bad? No, we should have a certain level of cortisol in our system. This is what wakes us up in the morning, helps us get out of bed, helps us do things, helps us stay focused, helps us react and respond to stressful situations, all of the things, all of the things. But we need that cortisol. Cortisol works sort of in opposition from the melatonin here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if our melatonin is, you know, increasing at night, Cortisol should decrease. Like, hmm, let's, you know, let's calm down at night and get us sleepy. And then that's what the melatonin does, helps us get sleepy. And then in the morning, your body's like, oh, thank you, melatonin. You did your job. Be on your way. You can decrease a ton. And cortisol, bing, cortisol awakening response gets you up and out of bed. There you go. Yes. It should, they should work together. These guys work together. Together. And... I don't want to say opposition, but they're like seesawing each other. <laughs> but again, these, so this is your circadian rhythm. This is based on your circadian rhythm, your, your light and dark patterns. One of the most common things to improve your sleep is literally making it dark at night before you're going to bed. And then in the morning when you wake up, sunlight, actual sunlight, like get sun on your face, right? Wake, rise with the sun and get it on your face. I live in Minnesota. That is not possible like half of the year. So I have to have a lamp, a sun lamp. So my brain thinks it's getting the sun. It works. <laughs> it works. The next one that I'm going to talk about here is testosterone. Now testosterone here, it doesn't make you sleep, but this is greatly impacted by your sleep greatly impacted by your sleep. Testosterone 
is highest in your REM sleep. So this is really, really important for both males and females. Um, but if you are feeling sluggish, if you have a decreased libido and everything else, and your sleep is terrible, you need to work on that REM sleep. Rapid eye movement, REM sleep, that deep, deep, deep restorative sleep. That's where your testosterone is the highest, right? And women shouldn't have a ton of testosterone, but we should have some, right? And if you're not getting that deep, restful sleep, you're not going to have the right amount of testosterone for the next day. Yes. So very key thing, very key thing. Get these sleep patterns down, melatonin and cortisol, so that you can get that deep, restful sleep for your testosterone levels. Now, the last two I'm going to do together. Mm-hmm. Estrogen, and you know what, the, right? You know. And progesterone. These are also greatly impacted by sleep, right? These hormones impact your quality of sleep. What are some things that can change the quality of sleep here with your estrogen and progesterone changing? Great question. Great question. Great question. Uh, just your overall cycle different phases of your cycle you might realize like oh my gosh yeah like right before i get my period i do not sleep well i do not sleep well or right when it starts i just do not sleep well mm -hmm. it can impact your cycle yep or your cycle can impact how well you can sleep so it's helpful then to make sure you're doing all the other sleep pattern things that much more so you can assist your body in getting higher quality sleep Pregnancy. There is a thing called pregnancy insomnia. It's not fun. But that's because your hormones shift and change and it can impact your body's ability to sleep. And last, but certainly not least, I should actually put this one first, but menopause. Holy cannoli menopause can have a huge impact on your body's ability to sleep. This is another hormone shift and change. So these levels shifting and changing throughout the month with pregnancy or going through perimenopause into menopause impacts your body's natural ability to get sleep. Even if you're like, yeah, I'm maintaining the same circadian rhythms. I'm going to bed at the same time. I'm waking up with the sun. I live in a state where I can get out and get sunlight in the morning. And I go for a morning walk. Fantastic. But why am I having such a hard time in perimenopause with my sleep? Because your hormones. Because your hormones. So this would mean you need to focus on these hormones to get better sleep. Yes. And oftentimes, you know, we do testing for this. This is why I do this type of testing in the Female Hormone Solution Program, because it's important to see what all your levels are. So I do Dutch testing that shows us what your estrogen, what your progesterones are, what your testosterones are, what your cortisols are, and... Does it show you melatonin? It sure does. Right there. It shows you melatonin. So we get a lot of in-depth look at your body's ability to sleep, to get quality restorative sleep right here. And if you're like, yeah, I go through some patterns where I sleep well, some patterns where I don't, that's still a problem because you're not maintaining your overall hormone levels. So, and that means you can't move forward with other health goals metabolism, all that other stuff. You know, oh, I want to get stronger. I want to build more muscle. Awesome. If you're not sleeping, it's not going to happen. So that's why we test for all these things. We look at all of these things and we address all of them in this program, making sure your body is functioning the way that it should. So you feel better and you can get and keep your results faster. Yes. So again, go in the comments, get on the list, all of the things. So other things I have for you, of course, um, I have my books, The Female Fat Solution and Female Menopause Solution. These are I'm making a mess here with my tinctures. I didn't close this one all the way. <laughs> female Menopause Solution, Female Fat Solution. These are on Amazon. I have my tinctures, the um, Estero Balance and Progesterone Balance. These are going to help your body create and maintain the right amount of hormone for your system. And then I also have my Adrenal Balance one. This one is fantastic for cortisol levels to help your cortisols calm down, especially if you're having a hard time winding down at the end of the day. Fantastic to help you wind down at the end of the day. Um, if you're looking for other resources, other places of information, I have my podcast, The Female Health Solution, and then my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Westy, where all of my videos get archived. So you can subscribe there to stay updated on everything I have that comes out. Okay, so that's what I got for you guys tonight. Tonight I am doing my masterclass 
we're going deep diving on Dutch test. So if you are on the wait list, you will get notified for that it's free masterclass. And then we're going to, I'm going to go through a bunch of info and do some live Q and a for a little while. So hopefully I will see you there. Have a great rest of your night and I will see you later.